The Metacon Speedmaster Cinema Lenses S35 T1. What do I think of them and are they worth buying for you? Uh, full disclosure, I have not been paid by doing this review. Uh, Mittagon sent me a few lenses to try out and film uh, some uh, material for them to promote the lenses on, uh, as you've seen, and I linked them down below so you can watch it. I'm gonna give you my take on them. So first of all, uh, build quality. Build quality on these are great. Uh, they are fully metal. Yeah, this is the 50mm on my Canon R5C. So it's uh, chunky, but yeah, uh, it's full metal and it's it balances really well on my Canon R5C. Make it uh, really good for, for handheld uh, shots. Uh, when I've been using it, obviously, I have a ND filter here as well. Uh, so that, that comes into play here and also a pro mist most of the times. The glasses are really good, uh, or good as you say, fine. Uh, haven't really experienced any sort of uh, problems with it really. Uh, the aperture ring works really really smooth. I don't know if you can see this, uh, but they are really really smooth. And also the focusing ring, it feels natural when you're pulling, pulling focus. Uh, the focusing ring on the 20mm has been a little bit stiffer than the focusing ring on the 50mm. I don't know really why, but uh, it's not a huge difference. And uh, I think most, I haven't really noticed, I was only noticing it when really comparing them head to head. So let's go into the, the fun part. Uh, picture quality. I have never been using uh, real cinema lenses before. I've uh, used a Canon EFL glass, but I've also been using a lot of Canon FD lenses, vintage lenses, uh, for filming. And I would say, in short, these lenses are somewhat in between a modern lens and a vintage lens. For my projects, most of the times, I'm really after a cinematic, soft, uh, organic look uh, that also goes well into to the post-processing which I tend to make a little bit vintage style uh, soft, uh, uh, some grain on it and flares and stuff so this works really well for that they do create a really, really soft soft organic and cinematic <laughs> look, overused term and uh, it's nice to have a sort of a vintage lens in a modern in a modern coding if you will so i've been using these with my canon r5c and i'm mostly going handheld uh, just like this they work really well they are a little little heavy but that is to be expected uh, these are cinema lenses so i can't really complain i think they are compared to other cinema lenses uh, and uh, and the fact that this one, this one, for example, is 50 millimeter T1 or uh, F0.95, they are really light and they work really well and they are really balanced uh, on my Canon R5C. And I can easily go handheld without really feeling that it's too front heavy or yeah, too back heavy. Uh, they really, yeah, they're they're really a good fit. Able to use this. Uh, like this handheld, uh, changing batteries often <laughs> uh, and create some really, really beautiful footage. So my recommendation, would I recommend uh, you guys to buy uh, these type of lenses? I think most of you that watches my my films, you know that I'm, I'm a little bit more into the soft look uh, or organic filmic look, if you want. And that goes hand in hand with uh, the post-productions that I do on, uh, on my films. Uh, if you want a more sharper look uh, for certain projects uh, that works or that demands it, maybe a Sigma Art or a Canon RF lens would be better suited for that. Lenses like Canon FDs, uh, vintage lenses, but you want some more reli reliability in the lens. Uh, I think this one would, would work really, really great actually. So if, you, if you're going after that look of uh, really nice flares and a little bit haziness and a little bit 
more vintage style filmmaking. These ones are really good. And uh, I tend to put a promised filter on anyways. Uh, and I also do it with these ones. So I, I, I tend to push that, uh, that look quite, quite a lot in my footage. Uh, so I would recommend uh, these lenses for those who want um, a more, uh, more vintage look, but you want to control it a little bit more. Also, uh, some quick tips uh, when using uh, lenses like these. Uh, out in the field, uh, I made the mistake one time uh, going on a project and I brought my uh, ND filter, uh, I think it's uh, one and a half stop to five stops. Uh, tried to go outside and all, all of a sudden the sun was out uh, and the, the ND filter was not enough. I pulled it up to five stops and it still wasn't enough. So they tend to obviously let in a lot of light to the sensor. So you may need to, to step up that ND filter as well to around 10 stops uh, to be on the safe side. Uh, maybe six or seven uh, stops I think I was on. Uh, when, when going uh, uh, outside in sunny weather and, and uh, doing it uh, in T1. Uh, so that may be a consideration uh, before buying them. So that was all from me and you can watch my material. Uh, there's still some coming up. I still have some, some things in the works. Uh, there are, are some other reviews out there uh, that I think are much, much <laughs> better produced than this one uh, but you can watch my material uh, please do and uh, let me know uh, if you have some questions about these lenses or or uh, color grading or what have you uh, just ask them in the in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them stay tuned I'm gonna go work on some other material and hopefully get rid of this uh, cold that I'm having I'll see you bye bye